Hello everybody! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a Extreme 3D Lay's Potato Chip bag that is pouring over the nail with a whole bunch of little chips. I think this is so cute. I love all these pouring designs. In case you guys have not noticed, I've been making a lot of them lately because I, as soon as I make one, I think of like five more ideas for this technique. And so my list of pouring nails just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And I really get a kick out of making these little bags. I think it is the coolest thing ever because it is so much fun and every single one of them promotes a new challenge. And I love to challenge myself. So I hope you guys are enjoying these as much as I am because I want to keep making them. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see the next one. Bye. So we're going to begin with an overlay of teal acrylic. And I went back and forth on what background color I thought would be appropriate for this nail. And I just wanted to keep it kind of bright and fun. And this is such a beautiful color that is, it's um, double dips cutie patootie. And I'll put all that stuff in the description box below. But I just love this color. It's one of my favorites. And I was looking for an excuse to use it. So that is where that came into play. And I'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file. And after that, I'm going to take a very narrow bit and drill a hole right through the tip of the nail. So now on a silicone mat, I'm going to be painting a rectangle of yellow gel polish and this rectangle of yellow gel polish is a little bit bigger than it probably needed to be but it's just nice to kind of have a bit of extra space because sometimes when you get to painting a logo all of a sudden you run out of room so if you have a little bit bigger than you need and it gives you some space to trim it later too then with a darker shade of kind of a marigold orange color I'm going to start painting the little sun of the Lay's logo right about, I don't know, a third down from the top and all the way over to one side. And after that, I'm going to flash cure that with my flash cure flashlight. And then I'm going to do just a little bit more of a yellow highlight because I thought it needed to just brighten it up a little bit more. And now that I have that little bit of that done, I'm going to flash cure it again. You guys are going to see that little flash cure flashlight pop in a lot. And I usually cut that out and not show that in the video, but I decided to leave it in this one so that you can see how often I flash cure because it's easy to say, you know, flash cure after every single color change or after each step, but every once in a while, it's just nice to actually see how often I'm actually doing it. And so now I'm going to switch to some white gel polish and I'm going to be doing a little bit of an outline around my sun. And then after I have that drawn on, I'm going to kind of blend it out a little bit flash cure it again and then I'm going to switch to red gel polish and this is a very like true prime red and I'm going to paint the banner that's going across the sun so it just goes right across like that and it goes a little bit beyond the edges of where the sun are and it's just kind of like a nice little swoopy shape and fill that in and you guys are going to be really surprised to see that I'm going to flash cure this again in just a second there it is. So as you're watching me paint this, I'm just going to make a little note on my silicone mat because I do get questions on it uh, probably more often than I expected to when I started using it. So the really, the great thing about the silicone mat that I'm using for me and my opinion is that it does not have any guidelines on it. It doesn't have, you know, any little sh printed on shapes of nails or anything crazy like that. It's just completely plain. It's kind of a semi-clear white and it's just exactly what I'm looking for. And it's huge. It covers up my entire table almost just about, there's just a little bit of maybe two inches on either side of it that don't get covered up. And the reason I have this one instead of one that is made for nails is because it is easy to wash. It's easy to use and it was inexpensive. That's probably the biggest key. I've seen some art mats that are made for nails that are actually really costly. And so I was trying to find one that didn't have anything on it because I don't want, when I'm painting a potato chip bag, I don't want it to have little pictures of fingernails in the background. I want it to just be, you know, unintrusive. So this one is a kitchen silicone mat and it works amazingly and it was $13, which I think is super reasonable. And gel polish peels right off of it. I, if I need it to be cleaned well, I rinse it off in my sink and I actually use a little bit of dish soap on it to clean it off and it comes out like it was brand new, it dries well, and it is a nice non-shiny surface to make little artsy stuff on top of. So it is the best thing ever. I did buy it off of Amazon. And like I said, it was $13. There were a bunch of options for it. I mean, you know, a thousand brands of this exact same thing. So if I, when I looked for it, I just made sure it was a good size for my table and relatively inexpensive and I wanted white. So this is where I got my silicone mat from. It's not made for nails, but it definitely works for nails. So there's my little piece on that. So we're going to go through and continue working on this logo. I have the word Lays written across my banner and I'm going to use a little bit of black gel polish just to clean up some of those white lines and add a little bit of a drop shadow on them. So in case you guys don't know, a drop shadow is more of a 
editing term and not an art term. So if you're looking at a drop shadow, it's where the shadow steps away from the lettering just a little bit. So there's sometimes there's a gap depending on how far the distance is on your drop shadow. But basically what it does is it makes the letters look like they're pushed forward, like they're 3D and they're standing out. And I really love that look and it gives just so much dimension to a design without adding really a whole lot of work and makes the letter stand out from the background some. So when you're doing that, you're going to, I always like to envision a circle when I'm starting to do drop shadows and 50% of that circle has a black line on it. And you can look at the angles of your circle and then transfer that to the other letters. At least that's how I think of it in my brain. And I know that that might not transfer to other people because everybody has a different way of thinking of it. So a different way of doing it if you wanted to is on every line, if it's a vertical line, your your drop shadow is going to be on the left. And if it's a horizontal line, it'll be on the bottom. So then as you're doing it on your letters, just you know, know if it's vertical or horizontal where that line would be. So that's kind of the idea with making those. But now on the bottom of your bag, you're going to make your little potato. So I've got a shade of cream and it's called Cafe Au Lait from Adam Glam and it's the perfect potato chip color. And then the perfect brown from Adam Glam too. Sometimes I remember these color names like it's no problem at all. And it is actually really funny to me that I sometimes can remember stuff. But I've got, those are the two colors I pretty much used for my potato and they were about the perfect color. And I'm going to paint my little potato. Some of them are more of a chip shape and some of them look like they're just cut off the potato. I, when I first was looking at my Lay's bag, I almost didn't want to paint these potato chips in a potato because I thought, oh, that is so tiny. It's going to be too much work. And then, like I said, I do these to challenge myself. So I gave myself a mental slap on the head and said, why would you do that? I did a, you should have had a V8 to myself basically is what it was. Because why would I turn away from a challenge when the whole idea with any of these designs is to push myself and push my art and my skill set? So of course, I did the potatoes and I'm so glad because I love them. They're adorable. And then I'm going to do the classic. I'm just going to write classic underneath lays. And instead of using gel paint or gel polish, I used acrylic paint for that because I think it is easier to work with. And after all of this, I'm going to apply a thin layer of gel top coat on top of the whole chip bag and cure it. And make sure that this layer is very thin because if your top coat gets too thick, it kind of impedes the bag from being folded. And you need to make sure that it can be folded so you can get the little 360 opening bag thing going on. So now we're going to trip, trim our chip bag. I combined words together and we're going to make it into the size that we need to fold it in half. And then after it's folded in half, you're going to glue two of the edges together. So you're going to glue the bottom edge and then the long edge up the side together and just hold that together with your fingers. You may get glued to your chip bag, but that is a risk that you just have to take. And then after you have that, then you can glue a piece of wire into the hole in the nail and just hold it in place until it starts to set up. And then we're going to glue the other end of the wire into the chip bag, again, holding that until it sets up. And now we can start making our little potato chips. And this part is actually incredibly you know, easy to do. All it is is yellow acrylic on a straw. And when you're sculpting them on the straw, don't make all of your chips vertical. So chips are a oval, so it's longer in one direction than it is in the other direction. And turn this direction of your oval on the straw so that your chips have a slightly different curve to them from one another and just kind of do them randomly across the straw however they seem to fit and do a lot of them. It always seems like whenever I'm making a chip design or any kind of these pouring designs and I'm making little pieces that I'm making far more than I'm ever going to need. But then as soon as I go to start placing them on the nail, since you have to put some inside the bag and then you want some to cover the wire almost completely and then over the nail, I always, I always use them all even if I feel like I'm making twice as many as I'll end up using. So whatever number it is that you make, think to yourself, I should probably double it. At least that's what I've been doing lately to make sure that I have enough. I don't have to go back and make more halfway through the assembly process of the design. So place your little beads of yellow acrylic. I always like to do a couple at a time so that it gives them a chance to set up and I'm not just waiting for them to turn to the right consistency to press them out into the chip shape. And your chips can be different sizes too. They don't all have to be, you know, perfectly the same size or even the same shape. Most of the time potato chips are fairly oval but they can be a little bit more round. If you wanted to be really funny with it, you could make some that have like a brown spot on them too if a potato had an eye or a little bruised spot, or you could even add a bit of skin on some of them if you want to take it that extra, extra mile. But now with some jewelry gel over, the, I'm going to apply that over the wire, over the inside of the bag and over the nail. And when I'm applying it over the nail, I'm applying a 
fairly thick layer, and this is actually true for the wire too. You don't wanna apply it so thin that it won't actually grab the chip. So you wanna make sure that it's enough thickness of the jewelry gel that you can press the chip into it. And then after you have that, apply some gel top coat over the nail, and that's over the jewelry gel too, and then press the chips into all of that wet gel. I like to start from the bag and then kind of work my way down. However you want to do it though is just fine as long as you pretty much fill in the opening of the bag, cover up that wire, and then add a couple on the nail too. And then this is it. I love this design. I think it is absolutely adorable. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And if you want to see any of my past pouring designs, I will put them in the description box below. And here is a Melody Minutes. It is just like ice. Is it really good? Yeah. Yeah, there might be some grass under there. Don't eat the grass, okay? Well, you don't really want to eat the grass. Do you like this snow? Can you look at me? Yeah. You like it? Is it good? I like it. more. Hi, pumpkin. Is that really yummy? Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys for watching. Melody absolutely loves the snow. And even though that one was a pretty low-key Melody Minutes, it just really shows how excited she gets and she wants to eat snow constantly. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.